Questions for Coach? No? Okay, good talk. <laughs> As we saw Chop when we were here, uh, how's how has he looked and are you hopeful that he's going to go Saturday? Yeah, like I, I think I said that to you guys on uh, Monday, uh, that we're, we're hopeful that he'll be he'll be ready to go. How did he look today? Good. I, you know, I, I, I spent most of the time on the opposite side of the field, so I got to watch the tape. But, but good, he looked good on, on Sunday, he looked good on Monday. Um, I'll, I'll watch the tape, but yeah, good. How would you say you're uh, on the practice field thus far this week, your, your passing attack and momentum, confidence, whatever you want to call it, coming out of that Maryland matchup, is that something that you can feel on the field? Can you sense it with the way these guys are approaching the, the, the practices? You know, I, I think we've been making steady progress all, all year long. I wouldn't necessarily say anything significantly different from last week, but I think we've been making steady pro progress um, in practices uh, and a little bit uh, in the games. James, we saw Tony Rojas make some plays at the end of the night. Is he someone that can factor more in the rotation earlier in games? Uh, he did some really good things. Obviously, we feel really good about the guys that are ahead of him as well. Um, we'll see how we'll see how that plays out. But I do think it is a positive um, that we got young guys that are getting a ton of reps right now, and that we got young guys that not only are, are getting a ton of reps but are making plays, which allows them to gain confidence and the coaches to gain confidence in them. James, what do Friday and Saturday look like for you personally from a recruiting perspective? How much time do you have to spend on that and how do you balance it personally between the recruiting and the game prep? Yeah, I think this is one of the Fridays where I'm, I'm not out. Uh, I've been out a good portion of the year, not every game, but a good portion of the year, either Friday morning and Friday night. Um, I don't think I'm out this week. And then we got a ton of, of recruits coming in on Saturday, and that, that's the hard part, especially with it being a 12 o'clock game. You know, that, that, makes it, that makes it challenging. Um, but I also think we try to communicate as much as we can with the recruits that, look, you just got to understand um, we, don't have, you know, we don't have a whole lot of opportunity to sit down with guys individually. So I think most of them understand that. Uh, and then some of them that are able to get in here early, then we may do something with them if they're here Friday or if they're staying the night. Saturday allows us to do some things on Sunday, but um, it's challenging. But obviously the game environment, the game, you know, should create a great experience for them. James, uh, Katron, these last two weeks, how do you assess how he's played and in what you call a you know, big boy game, his running style is power. How much does that yeah, really well. I mean, he's he's been playing really well now. I think he really built on what he did last year. Um, he is a tough guy. You know, every run, he's usually breaking tackles, um, punishing tacklers, um, carrying guys for another two or three yards. Uh, is really, really playing well. And you know, we talk about toughness. You know, being one of our you know, key ingredients as a team and, and on offense. And I think he's one of the guys that I think does a phenomenal job uh, of kind of setting that tone for our whole team. It fires up the sideline, it fires up the offensive line. Uh, and he's having, he's having a really good year. And I think he's respected kind of throughout the league with the way he runs and his running style. A week like this, as the head coach, what would you say your principles are when it comes to which motivational buttons to push and when to push them? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it's interesting because as you can imagine, over nine years, I've tried about everything, right? Um, you know, trying to keep the approach as consistent and, and steady as, as we can. Um, after wins, coaching the guys really hard so there's no um, complacency kind of seeping into the program. Um, try to try to keep things as consistent as possible but then there's different kind of methods and models that we've used over over nine years and trying to kind of figure out the best way to do it and then the other challenge is, is right every team is different so something maybe it, you've done two years ago maybe it, that wasn't the right thing for that team but maybe it is for this team so just trying to kind of understand the temperament of the team and that's where the leadership council comes in or the captains come in to kind of get a feel where they're at with things. I met with the captains on, I think it was Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday before practice. Um, Theo kind of had some comments to the offense as well. Uh, Keaton Ellis had some comments to the defense. I thought were good messages overall. 
but that's constantly what you know I'm trying to do when I stay up l late thinking about or early in the morning thinking about uh, I have discussions I went in with the defensive staff and kind of talked about some things from a strategy standpoint uh, this morning with Manny and the defensive staff uh, just trying to find any little advantage we can uh, that's going to give us a chance to, to you know, get a win on Saturday. So uh, that, that's what the entire week is about. Coach, you're talking about your depth a little bit. How key is it in a top 10 showdown like this one against a team that's very well-rounded? Yeah, it's, it's really important that at this point of the year um, that we have at least a two deep going into the game that's gained experience. So that allows you with a three deep to have maybe one guy that's bumped up or bruised. Um, so I think the depth is, is really important. Um, they got a lot of depth on their defense and their front seven to play a ton of guys. We do as well. That's going to be important. This quarterback uh, is a heck of an athlete and being able to have fresh bodies in there to be able to kind of chase him uh, and create some pressure is going to be going to be really important. You mentioned how the practice. You mentioned how the practices keep going. Uh, thank you. What's the value of zone pressure? Seems like uh, something that a lot of teams are doing more lately than maybe in the past. Well, it, it really depends. If, if you're a zone team, then you probably live in that a lot. If you're a man team, then that's a good change up, right? And I think what you're trying to decide each week is when you watch people on tape, what is that quarterback most comfortable with? You know, is he most comfortable with, with man coverage and man beaters? Uh, does he read zone coverage well and have a feel for space and depth? Um, that's what you're trying to decide, and, and you're really trying to say, okay, what's going to be our complement this week? You know, are we going to mix in some zone pressures? Are we going to, you know, go heavy man pressure? And that's what you're trying to do to try to confuse the quarterback and try to confuse the coordinator to show one thing and bring another type of deal. Um, and those zone concepts sometimes help with that and sometimes allow you to do that or you know the formations play a part in that as well right um, you know if you're if you're getting a lot of mesh and crossing routes then obviously you know your zone complements help with that too you mentioned how practices have gotten better throughout the weeks how how has the team taken that next elite level to prepare for an opponent like Michigan yeah we just try to get better every single week James, first and second down is always important, but is it more so in a game like this when you've got two elite defenses on the field? Yeah, I think it's 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 critical. I mean, as as we know, a couple weeks ago that was that was a problem. Uh, we got behind the sticks, and you don't want to get behind the sticks against elite defenses. You guys see when that happens, um, you know, for our defense, when we're able to get people in obvious passing downs, that's not a whole lot of fun. You know, when you got the pass rushers that we do and the scheme that we do, the same with them. So doing everything we can to scratch, claw, fight, uh, to manufacture offense, to make plays, and to stay ahead of the sticks. Um, they've been pretty much ahead on the scoreboard and on the sticks on offense and defense all year long. So trying to get them to play in a way they have not played really this year. James, we talked to Kalen today, and he was pretty mm -hmm. honest in his assessment of how he played a couple weeks ago at Ohio State, but he said the big thing that he took away from that game was you know, making sure that it didn't linger, didn't carry over into his future performance. In his three years here, how have you seen his maturity kind of come along in addition to what we've seen on the field? Yeah, he's he's an awesome young man, and, and Terry's done a really good job with him as well. Um, it really helped that he came from a, a great high school program. Um, it really helped that he was raised extremely well, mom and dad. Obviously, him and his brother are very tight. That's a tremendous support system for him here as well. Um, but he's always had a lot of belief in himself. He's always been super competitive since he stepped on campus. Uh, and he's been coachable. And I think him and, him and Terry have developed a really strong relationship. Um, so I... I I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm very, very proud of him. He's done well academically. He's really done a good job in his three years of kind of maxing, maximizing this experience and kind of taking it all in. Um, and his maturity on and off the field is another example. You mentioned, I think, recently.
increase in the, uh, the dominance in the third quarter. You guys, I think the number's like 87 and nothing or something. Yeah, NERS is the same way. Yeah, right. What, what goes into that dominance, and what kind of impact is it going to have? Well, I, I think, obviously, you know, you got two really good defenses that also set their offenses up for success. Um, and I think both defenses are playing really good in the first and second half, but they're also experienced coordinators that also now after having a good idea of what they've done in the first two quarters, got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and how they're trying to attack you. So then you can make some subtle adjustments with the players. You can talk with the coach and staff about you know, how we're going to approach the second half, uh, eliminate some of the calls that maybe you know, gave you some issues in the first half, lean heavily into the calls that were successful. Um, but I think it's, it's kind of like a player, right? You, you get into a rhythm. You get into a rhythm of how to call the play and, and what we're doing well and what's giving them problems. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.